How's it going everyone? Welcome to Apple Insider. This is gonna be a fun video. We've got this brand new guy, this. If you guys recognize this, yeah, this is the new 8th gen iPad. The new 8th gen iPad is here. The 2020 basic entry level iPad coming in just above $300. And there are a few changes, mainly the biggest thing to talk about is the processor. So in this video, we're gonna go through the current 8th gen compared to the 7th gen iPad. And then we're also gonna give you some performance numbers comparing this guy against the last gen iPad as well as the current gen iPad Pro. So some fun stuff to check out, see how that performance is doing with that new processor uh, and see how good of a value this new tablet is. So let's go ahead and just dive into everything. Okay, so here we are, the iPad, 8th generation 2020 iPad. This is Apple's basically their lowest cost full size iPad. This is perfect for the education market or anyone who's doing just kind of basic browsing, uh, email, just looking at photos, that kind of stuff. You don't need the fancy processors. You don't need all of the upgrades that Apple is tacking on to their biggest expensive versions, but this thing is getting some worthwhile upgrades. Now the body of this thing has stayed the same. So you're still looking at the same display as it had before, uh, same brightness, 500 nits of brightness, a lot of stuff, same uh, touch ID, still on the home button there, still has a home button still comes in the same 32 and 128 gigabyte sizes. That is what you're working with here. You still have the cellular options that are gonna cost you 130 bucks over top of either of those storage options. 32 gigs is still not a lot for entry level storage. But again, if you're just browsing and stuff, then you probably will be okay with that 32 gigs. And of course that 128 gig option is there should you need to upgrade to it. Few changes, otherwise, Apple did make the jump to USB-C but not in the way you're thinking. This thing still has a lightning port, lightning port, still down there, but Apple did include a lightning to USB-C cable inside of the box and a 20 watt USB-C power brick. I think that is definitely an upgrade, so at least there's a USB charger inside the box here, even if the tablet itself is still on lightning. Apple's reserving USB-C for the new iPad Air, as well as those high-end iPad Pros. Internally, Apple has jumped from the A10 processor to the A12 processor. Now, the A10 processor was a two-core processor, and the new A12 is a six-core processor. So a big jump just in terms of number of cores and the performance from going from an older processor to a newer one and the additional cores there, we are seeing some huge improvements. Apple says there's a 40% upgrade in terms of performance over the last generation. And of course we sell some equally solid performance in our Geekbench testing. For reference, the seventh gen iPad had a 746 single core and a 1326 multi-core score on Geekbench 5.2. We take our new iPad here and we ran that on the same benchmark and we're getting a single core score of 1117 and 2645. Those are some solid numbers, huge upgrades in both the single core and multi-core scores. For the compute score, we're seeing a result of 5366 on the 2020 8th gen iPad. But why stop there? Let's compare the new iPad with its A12 processor to the current generation iPad Pros, which are rocking the A12Z Bionic processor. So in our Geekbench test for single core, we got an 1117 and for multi-core a 4690. We're seeing pretty much there the same single core scores and we're seeing a slightly elevated multi-core score because you are going from a six core chip to an eight core chip. So you have a little bit higher multi-core score there on the iPad Pros. But what you're mostly going to be doing, especially on those entry level iPads, you're not gonna be utilizing those multiple cores all that often. 90% of what an iPad does in daily tasks is just going to be relegated to a single core. So the fact that we're getting the same single core scores is pretty impressive for this new iPad. The biggest benefit that iPad Pros have in terms of performance is with graphics. The iPad Pros managed a whopping 12,021. That's compared to the what? 5366 we saw on the 8th gen iPad. So a huge boost in graphics performance, but that makes sense because those on the iPad Pros are likely doing video editing, photo editing, uh, podcasting, anything that's gonna be really taxing that metal GPU score and we really understand why the iPad Pros are so much more capable going from the A12 to the A12Z Bionic processor. Otherwise, the new iPad 8th generation 2020 hasn't changed all that much. Three gigs of RAM, that A12 processor, the same wireless connectivity options, same storage option, I'm pretty sure even same starting price. 
what you're really going to notice is just that huge improvement in performance, both on the single and multi-core scores. And that's what really makes sense, because if you're buying this iPad, you want it to last for a while. So the fact that you can pick it up and it's got that same single core score as the current generation iPad Pros for hundreds and hundreds of dollars less, I think that is an absolute win. If you guys want to grab the new iPad, you can find links for it down below in the description. And I want to know what you guys think. Are you guys considering the entry-level iPad? Or maybe you're waiting for the new iPad Air. Or are you trying to make the even tougher decision and choose between the iPad Air and maybe a future iPad Pro or the current-gen iPad Pros? Let me know on Twitter because I would love to talk about that even more. Find me at Andrew underscore OSU. And I'll check you guys out in the next video.